a little while. Talk about for just a little while. The first thing, you've got to be able to identify whether you're working with a group or whether you're working with an individual because you have to know which z-score you're going to calculate. This one or this one. There's only two for right now. There's only two. But you've got to know which one is which. That, that's one of the key things we're learning in this whole section. So let's read through there. Body temperature is an average of 98.6, standard deviation of 0.62, sample of 106 people were selected, find the probability that the average temperature for the sample will be 98.2 or lower. That tells you a lot of key information there, right? You just have to kind of interpret it. Because what I'm going to do on your test, I'm going to give you problems like this one and like this one, the, well, the original questions those came from from last time, right next to each other. I mean, they're going to be right there. And one of them's going to use this, and one of them's going to be that, and they're not going to be the same. Are you with me? You sure? Okay. So, question. When I'm dealing with that problem, am I looking up the probability for an individual or for a group of people? Individual or a group of people. What do you think? If it was an individual, it would say, find the probability that a randomly selected person, a randomly selected person, or one item. Here, this is, this is saying a couple keywords for you that clue you into a few things. Clue you in on which formula to use. First thing it says is a sample of a certain number of items. A sample of 106 items. There's got to be somewhere where you're going to plug in that 106 items. If you look up here, this is for an individual. Sure, it's got a mu. Sure, it's got a sigma, the mean and the standard deviation. But the x, is x an average or a data value? You need to know that that's a data value. Is x an average or a data value? Definitely a data value. OK. There would be no place to put your n. That's, there's, there's no sample size there. Also, one more keyword. What's the probability that the, wait, does it say, what's the probability that the temperature of, no, no, it says the, what, what now? The average. That's a key word. You've got to find some place where you're going to plug in the 106 and it's dealing with an average. If you look back up here and compare these again, this is the data value. That's not standing for an average. This would be like, find the probability that a uh, randomly selected person has a temperature of less than. That would be the temperature. Here, though, what's that stand for? The average of the sample. What are we dealing with over here? The average of the sample. That clues you in on which one to use. Over here, this stands for sample size. What's our sample size here? Okay, so that, that's relevant for our case. So n is 106. So again, are we dealing with um, an individual value or are we dealing with a group here? Definitely a group. Keywords, sample of a certain number of people, that's key. Also, the average thing. The average clues you into. We're using this z-score. Oh, what else do we want to find? Oh, can you find this? This and that and the other. Three things you got to find. A couple of them might be kind of confusing to you. Because when you think about it, here's, here's kind of another piece of information you know. There's actually two averages going on. Do you see it? There's two averages. That's the average of the, wait a minute, population or sample? Sample. This is the average of the population. Okay, so that you need to distinguish between those two things. So when we read our problem, yeah, n's pretty easy. N's the sample size. So here we have 106 people being found. What is the mu and what is the x bar? What's the mu? The mu should be the population. What is that one? 98.2 or 98.6? Okay. The 98.6, that's for everybody, right? That says body temperature has an average of. That means everything. That's the whole population. So, yeah, this one's going to be 98.6. What's X bar then? Good. Hey, X bar is what you're questioning. Okay, it's always going to be based with your sample. It should be like, find the probability that the sample will be blank. That's your x bar. That the sample will be 90. That the average of the sample. That's the average of the sample, 98.2. 
Sigma, there's only one of those. So sigma's generally not too bad. How much is our sigma here? Okay. Okay, so we've read through our problem real carefully. We've distinguished that we are going to be using our z-score for a group of individuals dealing with an average of a sample. It's clearly stated in our, some, some of the keywords that we have in our problem. What's the next thing that you should be doing here right now, folks? Say it louder. Let's find a z-score, because what we want to do is translate this distribution into something we can work with, a standard normal distribution. The only thing that does that is our z-score, so we're going to be using z-score. Before you do it, though, stop. You're all doing something right now that you probably should think about before you get started. You need to check to see if the conditions are met to use this information. You better check that. Better check conditions. Conditions, there was a magic number there. There's also a statement, if you didn't match that magic number, if you didn't match either of them, well, then you can do this. So the first magic number is how much, everyone? Okay. Good, 30. If n was greater than 30, did we have a problem whatsoever? No. Didn't matter what we said or anything else, we could use it. So how much is our n? One. Is that bigger than 30? Yes. So can we use this stuff? <coughs> but wait a second, wait a second. I didn't say anything about being normally distributed. Do I have to have that statement if my n is bigger than 30? Read through your conditions. Read through your conditions again if you don't know. It should be on your previous page. Okay, so do I need do I need the statement the population is normally distributed if my n is bigger than 30? No. It was a very amazing uh, theorem, the central limit theorem that said that no matter what your population looks like, this thing could be completely skewed one way. It doesn't, doesn't even matter. If you're taking sample sizes bigger than 30, your sampling distribution for the mean will be normally distributed, and therefore you can use uh, the standard normal distribution. You can use the z-score if your n is bigger than 30. Now let's do a little experiment. Watch on the board here, please. Let's say that I didn't have 106. Let's say it was now 10. Let's say it was 10. Could I use a z-score here? What would I have to have in my question in order to use a z-score here? That's the one. So you have to have one of two, well, you have to definitely have n bigger than 30 or n less than 30, but the normal distribution part of it. Okay, so that's, that's your conditions. If you have neither of those things, then you can't do it. Okay, back to 106. I want you all to work on your own. Find me a z-score, please. If you've already done that while I was rambling on about all this stuff, draw the picture. If you've already done that while I was rambling on, find the area. If you've already done that, well, shoot, all right then. Make the interpretation. Are you guys enjoying this stuff yet? I hope so. It's going to get more interesting. <laughs> like it's not already, I know, right? Crazy. How can it get more interesting than this? It's like the best ever. just about as interesting as if the Colts were to play the Dolphins. Yeah. That'd be crazy. Who wants to lose more? Well, the first thing you need to do, make sure you're setting up the formula correctly. I would like you to label these things before you get started. That way you know where everything's doing. Don't just do this off the top of your head. Otherwise, you might screw up the averages. I don't want that to happen. You might mess something up as far as sample size. I don't want that to happen. There's lots of numbers that are going to be floating around at you. Label them. That way you can go directly from these values to this formula. No problem. What is our x bar here? 
Ninety. We've already done the legwork and identified that, haven't we? So now we just have to substitute that in. Ninety-eight point two. Okay. Minus. We take our x bar minus our mu. What's our mu? Notice how if you get those two things confused, you're going to get a positive z-score where you want a negative z-score. Or a negative z-score where you want a positive, it'll be off by a sign. It'll be the opposite of what you're looking for. Your area will be completely wrong. Okay, over, what's the next thing I put? Divided by what now? The square root of, not just 106, right? That'd be way, that'd be way off. But the square root of 106. Also, you need to try not to round as much as possible. The rounding really will affect these problems, especially considering z-score is accurate to two to three decimal places in some cases. So if you're rounding to two decimal places, then your answer, your z-score, is going to be off. You need to at least have like three to four decimal places after this square root of 106. So don't just give me 10. A square root of 106 isn't 10. It's 10 point something, but it's not just 10. So you can't start rounding that stuff. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you are going to be off. Especially when you're dealing with like these decimals like 0 0.2, 0 0.6. It's, it's pretty important to not do that. So our z-score, we've got, looks like negative 0.4 to me. Mm -hmm. Over something. 0.62. What's the square root of 106? 10 point. What was it? 2956. 29. I'm going to put 2956. Okay. I just want to be sure that I'm not rounding too much. Just to be better safe than sorry. I don't even want to be off by a little bit. So negative 0.4, I'm going to leave that for a second while I calculate this. Notice I did the top portion of my numerator, and I'm now working on my denominator. I have to do the square root first, find out what the number is, then do our division here, find out what that number is, and then we'll be able to do our final division. What is 0 0.62 divided by 10.2956? Repeat that one more time. 0.06022. Perfect. And now we'll do this division. We'll do negative 0.4 divided by 0 0.06022. You're dealing with very small numbers, aren't you? If you rounded here inappropriately, this is going to be way off. Well, our z-score is certainly negative. Certainly negative. OK, how much is that z-score? Wait, wait now. 6.64, 6.64. Raise your hand if you're okay getting the z score of negative 6.64. Okay, let's draw our picture now. I'm going to move over here. I used to be so good at those. What's in the middle? Zero. Where's negative 6.64? Right or left? left? How far left? Oh, way to the left. Way in the left. Feel it's like, well, it's like here, actually. But we'll put it over here. It doesn't have to be exactly the scale. 